Thank you for joining me from Northern Thailand. The story that I revealed for the first time ever in English became complete when I successfully got the CIA to declassify 84 pages of previously classified documents which further revealed this fascinating intrigue of war. These are the documents you see as part of the largest paramilitary operation the CIA has ever undertaken, that being the secret war in Laos, a group of young CIA-employed English-speaking Thai men played an extraordinarily unique role, an anomaly of warfare that had never happened before and almost certainly will never happen again. The largest ever CIA paramilitary operation was in Laos during the Second Indochina War, the Vietnam War as we call it in the U.S. The CIA recruited and hired a small group of around 100 plus young Thai men, most with no military experience, to deploy to Laos to coordinate and conduct in combat forward air control operations for our strike and other aircraft. These young Thai men's only qualification was speaking English. They were recruited off the streets in many cases, many from plain looking newspaper ads, then given 14 days forward air control training by our Special Operations Air Force personnel here in Thailand, combat controllers or CCTs, and sent into Laos to battle with communications devices as their weapons, coordinating our aerial bombing, aerial medical evacuation, and air resupply to ground forces. The FAGs played a role in modern warfare so unique it had never been seen before the war and has not been seen since. These foreign individuals were given validation authority to clear U.S. aircraft to strike targets, perhaps the only time in the history of U.S. warfare that non-U.S. civilians were granted such authority. Because FAGs had developed the skill to coordinate aircraft strikes, they were also called upon to assist Thai artillery batteries hone in on enemy targets. These operations had remained hidden. There were scant unclassified written records of the war in Laos as this was a classified operation. So after coming to Thailand and discovering these Thai forward air guides and interviewing them, I found and interviewed the retired American CIA officers who ran these operations and supervised these Thai during the war. I then found and interviewed the retired U.S. Air Force Special Operations Combat Controllers who trained these Thai in forward air control procedures for two weeks at Udon Thani Royal Thai Air Base. Finally, I got these declassified CIA documents. So, from all of these sources, I was able to piece the story together. And now, I'm going to share with you. This video is an introduction for the full exciting story. Read my article on the Thai Forward Air Guides in the Studies in Intelligence, Journal of the Intelligence Professional, and my book on the subject, both free downloads located at my Academia page. By 1970, the U.S. had begun its drawdown from Southeast Asia. To protect Thailand, its ally, the U.S. and Thailand secretly created the Unity Program, an initiative to train and mobilize a large Thai force to fight in Laos, financed by the United States. Unity led to the deployment of up to 17,000 Thai soldiers in Laos by 1972. In 1971, a U.S. pilot mistakenly dropped ordnance on a group of Thai troops, killing 16, including two Thai commanders. Thus, there was a need for forward air controllers on the battlefield to coordinate airstrikes. In response, the CIA, who was conducting the ground war for the U.S., institutionalized the concept of forward air guides. Ground-based air controllers given a unique, if uncomfortable, acronym, FAGS, to differentiate them from Airborne Forward Air Controllers, or FACS. The CIA began recruiting over 100 military-aged, English-speaking Thai males Then one day, we found in the newspaper, in the Bangkok Post, that uh, they need field interpreter, the very good pay. We went 
to the Amarine Hotel. There was three guys sitting, you see, and then the one guy is uh, Farang. Uh, he has mustache. His name was Dave. I remember his name, Dave. And then other two guys, Abu Chai and one old man. Uh, maybe they're coming from the White House uh, in Udon. So uh, they said, oh, come on, sit. They asked, uh, did you uh, go training with the military? No. I said, I didn't serve in the service. He said, oh, then how do you know the, uh, we want you to the, involve with the military, military training. He said, oh, I, I, I learned something. I used to be field interpreter in the Northeastern Technical School, uh, which is now Mahaviti Yilai Isan in the Korat. He said, oh, fine. Uh, do you know the, the Thai guy? He asked me, do you know Pun Yai? I said, artillery. Oh, he said, good. <laughs> Vira answered a few more of their questions successfully and was told to await a telegram. It came directing him to a Thai border police office from where he was transported to a Royal Thai Air Force Base. Sending them to a 10 to 14 day combat controller class, CCT, taught by U.S. Air Force CCTs. After classroom training, the instructors conducted a live fire training exercise at the T-28 aircraft bombing range. Several forward air guides had previously served as translators at Thai training camps where U.S. Special Forces were training Thai soldiers. One, Sawat Songling, Big Mo, first started as a translator in 1959 working for U.S. Special Forces in Laos. Thai translators were not employed by the U.S. Department of Defense, but rather by the CIA's cover organization in Thailand, the 4802nd Joint Liaison Detachment, which was created in 1962. Chalurm Chai, codenamed Space, is 85 and in very poor health. He was a French and English high school teacher and then spent five years as a U.S. Army translator in the J-1 personnel section, then four months as an interpreter at a U.S. Army Special Forces training camp training Thai infantry before recruitment as a forward air guide. But now you're probably thinking, what's the so what to this? What does it mean? Well, this story culminates in the longest battle of the Second Indochina War from December 1971 to April 1972, where 19,000 battle-hardened North Vietnamese fought a mixed force of 4,000 Hmong, Thai, and Lao defenders with CIA officers commanding, the Thai forward air guides playing a critical role, and U.S. Air Forces to include the Ravens providing support. The U.S. and its allies won this longest battle of the war, which most likely you have never heard of, called the Battle of Skyline Ridge. In combat, FAGs were executing multiple complex tasks simultaneously. When the North Vietnamese and their allies, the Communist Patet Lao, were pressing attacks, FAGs were coordinating with U.S. helicopters to land and evacuate the Thai dead and wounded while synchronizing airstrikes in a deliberate effort to keep the enemy from destroying the vulnerable helicopters. Simultaneously, they coordinated with the Thai Battalion for combat operations and medical evacuation loads locations, talking with CIA proprietary aircraft such as Air America, Continental Air, and others. Such maneuvers would be difficult even in normal circumstances. Facing an enemy shooting artillery and mounting ground attacks made the maneuvers particularly perilous.